welcome to the green room, Lizzie and Chris. Thank you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks Hi. for having us. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Good. Excited? It's slightly scared. What are you going to ask us? <laughs> <laughs> the power. Um, well, we're here to talk about the doghouse, and obviously, we were all on the doghouse together. We were. Yeah. Good times. Obviously, we've all worked together for quite a long time, but the show brought us closer. <laughs> um, so, how did you guys first hear about the show? Ah, Chris. Do you remember? It's such a long time such ago. A long time yeah, ago. over six months ago, wasn't it? That we started yeah. filming. Was it the production company when they sort of turned up, or did you hear about it uh, from managers or just like word of mouth? Like, how did that kind of excitement? Build? I think, yeah, I think it was from managers initially. I think I probably hadn't been back long from maternity leave when it kind of started, but the process started such a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and then it feels like a lifetime. Yeah, day, it does. <laughs> it really does. I'm going to like ask us to remember all these things. <laughs> I um, know. Yeah, this is I the most difficult question. I'm gonna <laughs> ask. Oh, oh, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just through managers, and then on the grapevine. No, I I think I rem Ara remember Ara coming down really excited like we're going to be on TV. Uh, um, what did you think about the show when you first heard about it? Like, what were your initial thoughts? What did you expect? I think I expected like a very hard-hitting documentary behind the scenes of what goes on mm. at Wood Green. And then seeing the show, it's it's, it's a very kind of different, funny, light-hearted show that you still see some of the, you know, realities of what goes on. Um, but it's just a really funny show. The way they put it together, it just, um, yeah, yeah it made a lot of people smile and cry. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, they need to make a TV show that's entertaining, yeah. but they mm -hmm. did cover... Yeah. Some of the they did. realities of rescue. And yeah. I thought they got that balance quite right. They I know did. there was a lot that some people here would have liked mm, them yeah. to cover that didn't get covered. But I think um, they did touch on some quite important subjects. Yeah, they um, did. Just not everything, I but guess. Yeah, you, you couldn't, as you say, cover all of that because it wouldn't no. be good to watch. Like, I don't think any of us really want to watch all the, you know, all the sad, sad trips to the vets and all yeah. those things like that it, it was sad enough yeah it exactly was, yeah. as it was um, wasn't it and that's why we're doing the podcast so anything that's yeah. not covered in the show we can yeah, hopefully we can say enjoy it. we did do that it just wasn't <laughs> showing on the telly exactly <laughs> what did you expect lizzie did you think it would be like what chris expected yeah initially yes so i did have an idea it wasn't going to be quite the hard-hitting documentary um but yeah it was i n never really 100 percent knew i don't think until we watched it how it's going to work yeah, um, I think we just kind of went into it yeah. not really n expecting anything. Yeah. But actually what, I mean, how did you guys feel about the end result? Did you think it was like uh, better than what you thought it would be? Or I think we have something really unique. I think yeah. you know, if we'd, if it had been another hard-hitting documentary about shelters, there's plenty out there. Yeah. So yeah, what we've got okay. is something very very different. And I think yeah. that's what, what draws people in. It's that anticipation yeah. of, you know, is it going to work? Is it not going to mm. work? And people are really rooting for families and for the dogs and i think that's that's different there's nothing out there like, like that. and even us <laughs> even though we were in the whole film <laughs> yeah. we all, we're all sitting there at on watching on the tv like crying going, i don't cry when i'm at work why am i crying cry now? now yeah that exactly. was a really weird thing yeah, to be a part really of really weird absolutely it's like we have this i don't know but when you're at work it, you're at work and you sort You've of separate your, your emotional on, sort yeah. of yeah and all of a sudden i became a normal normal <laughs> just a member of the public you got your soul back. yeah i got my soul back for sort of an hour every thursday <laughs> and, and it's um, nice though it's yeah. nice to see from like outside of this bubble mm. you know the amazing yeah, totally. work that all these people yeah do. and i think for us as well because me and you we obviously did this in here working with the public doing the rehome side the happy side obviously for chris he was very much outside doing you know the not intakes so stuff. the not yeah. so see. fun bit so it was quite nice for us to be able to watch that side of it even though that's something we did quite a number of years ago you know it's we got to see the whole process um and see you know the dogs that we then rehomed see the intakes which i think was really nice yeah because you talk about intakes and showing sort of the hard hitting side of um rescue or at least <laughs> some of it so on the show we obviously had the intake side that was heavily featured every yeah. episode we also had a bit on euthanasia yeah. Um, and why some yeah. dogs have to be put to sleep or can't be rehomed. And that was, we were all pretty nervous about how that would yeah. go down, right? Definitely, yeah. Um, you never know how the public are going to take something like that. No, and no, you and, don't. And especially for not such a clear-cut reason. When it's clear-cut, mm. I think a lot of people understand. But when, you know, 
Yeah. It's more of a behavioural issue. Yeah. It's always quite tricky. Um, Especially when you can only fit a certain amount of information into an episode yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. there are so many details and conversations and bits that go towards, you know, that final decision. It is not an easy decision to make. There's only so much you can edit and put into an hour show to explain that so absolutely yeah. so i think we're kind of all talking about the wally story yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> bless him um so w- was there anything that sort of went on behind the scenes that people not don't necessarily know about or you know that wasn't edited into the show that we can talk about i think i think what's what's hard about wally's story is that he was here for such a long time and there were so many people with inward green that were invested in him and so many things were were tried tried to make it work, and I think what was hard at the end was you know when dog's been in the kennel for so long is that we see that day in day out, and when you watch mm. it on the show, people might not be considering how does that dog feel when he's in a kennel most yeah. of the time, and you know you know these dogs are social animals, they want to be with people, so yeah. you can find to a kennel for a year um that's something that we have to factor in but that maybe doesn't come across on the show as much because all you see is a snapshot of him out in the garden and playing with his hand and you think he's just this happy dog but behind the scenes there's quite a lot of sadness in Wally's story absolutely Mm. and going back to being on the show were you nervous about being on the show i expected there to be cameras and sound mics (laughs) and people (laughs) everywhere and us sat there going Hello, how <laughs> can we help you today? But actually, you know, there were fixed cameras everywhere. I mean, I think your experience was slightly different, Chris, because you didn't have the fixed cameras that we had in here, did you? No, we had a, a mixture. And, and I think what really helped is the, the the camera guy spent so much time with us, Matt and Tom, that they you felt like they were just your mates. Yeah, and yeah, you got yeah. used to them being around, and then all they did was have a camera on their shoulder. <laughs> and you just gradually got used to it over a period of time. It's so funny how you... Like being filmed becomes yeah just normal, normal. Yeah. after one or two days, it, doesn't yeah, it? it does. I mean, yeah. We spent the first day all being really <laughs> watching our walking around like this, you know. yeah. and yeah. <laughs> making sure you you know buttons yeah. done Top buttons done by the end of it, we're just like put a mic yeah. in, yeah. <laughs> a t-shirt, yeah, covered in dog slobber and dog yeah. food, and everything. You're like, this, is, this yeah. is what it's like. This is the and, and it did really show the reality of it, right? Because we all forgot the cameras were there. Yeah. So did your nerves kind of? dissipate after day one yeah like mine did yeah yeah i think the worst bit for me was that bit where you walked from the office into the meeting area and talked sat down and spoke with the people it's that walk it was almost like you know it's the build I'm up, being, yeah it? i'm being filmed walking that's like the yeah. worst part then you kind become of, really conscious and you yes, develop and this weird you, yeah. walk so this, i don't normally walk like this but yeah. i know i'm being filmed did you when you watch yourself back on camera are there things yeah. that you thought Oh my yeah, god! Do I really there are certain that? faces that I pull and I think, oh no. So what I, I got ridiculed a little bit for was mm. I, but you know, no one's been in film. I would shave, I would do my hair, try and look nice, <laughs> but I was still wearing the same shoes I've been wearing for four years. <laughs> and obviously they're filming the floor a lot and the yeah, dogs, yeah. and they were they were some <laughs> some dreadful shoes and some shots of them, but really close up, high definition <laughs> of your it, shoes yeah, and your toes so, poking out. So I ended up buying new shoes on the back of that. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping them though as a little memento. But <laughs> Maybe one day you can sign them exactly, and sell yeah. eBay. Sign and sell, Famous sign shoes. and sell. Yeah. Exactly. I do um, this horrible thing with my face when I'm being interviewed where I do this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's horrible. And you sort of kind of almost over yeah. pronounce things, oh, don't you? Yeah, totally. And overcompensate. Yeah. So, um, but I also don't think I sound like this when I watch it back. No, I don't think I sound a lot posher. Yeah. And I think I did. Do I sound poor? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you, you sound on TV, you sound like we hear you. You just don't, yeah, don't, don't sound like you hear myself. You. Yeah, no. no. And nobody likes themselves on camera, right? No. If you no. did, you no. would, you know, want yeah. to be famous. Yeah, None would, of us I've wanted to be famous. No, we exactly. just wanted to yeah. be part of this fun thing and yeah. <laughs> hopefully it turned out all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which hopefully it did. Yeah. Is there like any particular storyline or family or dog story on the show that really stood out to you um lizzie because you did a few of the rehoming yeah i did probably the one that really sticks out for me is the one that i didn't actually do but i was I just say that all the time yeah People i know ask me and i They're say like your one with uriah sticks out to me yeah but which one is it for you then? so for me yeah the uriah one definitely but also the one that sue did with I'm terrible with names. <laughs> it's the gent who had lost his wife. Yes. 
and the Ruby yeah, one, Ruby with her droopy really tail. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that oh, dog God. was just amazing because it was like she knew she was on telly and she performed. <laughs> she did. And there was this She mo- knew she was a TV Scripted. star. Yeah, there was this moment where well, I was like, oh, look at it, like her tail. And she hadn't lifted her tail since the day she'd come in. And, and then I was like, oh, I just wanted to put a tail up. And then ping, her tail went in the air. Her eyes mesh across her. I know. <laughs> and he was, pen and he was for such a long period, she sat in that meeting pen with with his daughter and just you know sort of looking at him like oh I'm not sure and he was getting really upset because oh. you know he, he really wanted you know this dog to be his new friend and he then, wanted that moment yeah of and he he said something like oh I don't think she likes me and at that moment she literally turned like that <gasps> And so went and sat between him. his legs, and like we, it was me and Sue and Angel, I think, and we were all just like, we must not cry on telly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but that. there were people. I mean, I wasn't in that day, but yeah. I heard there were people. Tom, yeah, <laughs> our boss crying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, but um, it was it mm. because it was so because obviously it was. Sue did the rehoming, and she had just lost her husband yeah. to cancer, and obviously for me, I was going going through something similar with my husband and his diagnosis so we were all really sort of invested in this guy we really wanted it to work and that was so perfect and also what they didn't say on tv was that his daughter had allergies so we had to be able to find them a sort of a dog that was going to be low shedding and we were looking through all these dogs and we were like ruby that could be the perfect doll yeah that one was a real tearjerker that was a really difficult one i think i think nobody in this job can you know we're all pretty hard you yeah. know yeah. especially us veterans that have been here oh, yeah. <laughs> we've seen a lot thick yeah. Skin. Um, yeah. yeah thick skin and when you see you know particularly an older mm. gentleman I crying know. after bereavement I think that Breaks always you. gets us I, know. I think what I took away from it is you guys do your bit where you find out a lot about the person sometimes I'm only with that person for 10-15 minutes doing the handover so you don't know their backstory so to see it from the very beginning yeah. Um, yeah. is really interesting. And we sometimes hand the dog over and we go away. And we don't really know what goes on when that person's alone with the mm, dog. Sure. So watching it on, on camera, you can see that moment where it all clicks. And um, that's something I've never seen before. And I think I'd forgotten how excited people might be when they get a dog. But just seeing people like this, they can't <laughs> contain themselves. They're shaking. Like I do meets of people like all the time. And you kind of forget how excited people are about it and how much of a big moment it is. Well, but it's just like an everyday thing for us, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. And it's so almost y- like this show has made us remember that moment yeah. of... You know, excitement is it gonna work is this the dog for me anticipation and the you know the, yeah it made me realize yeah how how exciting that part would be absolutely because obviously like we had that meeting pen before mm. we did the, yeah. um filming crew came but they sort of decked it out and made it look yeah <laughs> we didn't use it for that purpose, did we? No, it was we used m- it for you know sort of mixing dogs yeah. or maybe yeah, socialising more nervous dogs. Yeah, but quite quite garden for a dog to go to because it's a bit in the middle of nowhere of, of the charity. Mm, absolutely. So. so, did you find that the the show as a whole was a true reflection of what we did? I know that it was heavily you know focused on the the dog matching mm-hmm. side of things. <laughs> Um, and people really enjoy that. I've got a lot of feedback from people after the show saying, I think it's amazing what you do. Mm. You know, the whole matchmaking process, it's so much better than just going to the kennel and looking round and going, I want that one, Mm. because you base it on looks, you get your heart set, you go back, oh, okay, the dog's actually, it can't be left home alone, and you work four hours a day. Um, So I think, I I know that a lot of people have really appreciated that aspect and would consider coming to a green because of that. Mm, Yeah. and it did touch on some subjects, but do you think it was a fair reflection of of what we do here? I think so. And yeah, I, I've actually found that since watching the TV show, people have come in and been a lot more understanding of why we don't allow people to look around in the kennels and actually are much more on board with that without having to sort of wear them down a little bit with our long-winded explanations. People are very much like, actually, what you're doing is great because, you know, it must be horrible having someone constantly walk past your kennel, go, uh, telling you to sit and calling your name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just trying to have a sleep. Buddy, sit. Buddy, sit. Up and down <laughs> yeah. with sticks yeah. on the ke- on Exactly, the, uh, yeah. And, and th- you know, if you consider how busy our kennels used to be when we like did... like bank holidays. Yeah, and like that, it was just... 200 people around. Ridiculous. Kennels and so difficult to manage, wasn't it? It yeah. was, yeah. Yeah. And it's also, you know, we're saying to people, okay, you can't go and look around the kennels, but actually we can find you your mm. perfect. Yeah close to perfect your ideal <laughs> pet 
whether that's exactly. a dog, cat, bird, mm-hmm. whatever. But for yeah. purposes of the show, obviously mm-hmm. it was it dog. Was dog. Yeah. Were there things that you feel like the show didn't touch on that you kind of wanted to wanted it to cover? I don't know whether. I mean, you probably do more of the stuff outside, Chris. Were there bits that you do outside that they didn't sort of cover? I think what we're noticing is we're just taking in more dogs with more behaviour issues than kind mm. of ever before. And some of the ones featured may seem like they're just quite straightforward dogs with a slight mm. sad story. But um, from, from working out there, I think what we see is just difficult dogs with behaviour mm. problems that have either come in astrays and you, you don't know their background or they've been in a home that's done maybe not the right and best thing for them in training-wise. But uh, I think you know we're quite lucky that we have a, an area that works with specifically just high-end needs dogs. Um, and those staff have a lot less dogs to work with, but they are much more higher end in terms so of... So dogs like Wally? Dogs like Wally, for example, they're, they're not living amongst all the other dogs. They're se- segregated, living in their own certain area, getting very, very specific training. We just have a long waiting list of those types of dogs mm. needing to come in. Um, so I think there's a lot of pressure on us to rehome, but sometimes you know these dogs are here for a long time for a reason, because they are quite tricky. And as you say, dogs on the waiting list, we can only take... So many in when we've rehomed the ones that are difficult. If we filled up with all difficult dogs, we would struggle no, to rehome. Nobody would come here, would no, they? No, they would come here, yeah. no, because it, it, we wouldn't be able to match these dogs. So yeah. um, I don't know how much that was touched on, but that is a very real part of the day-to-day mm. job is managing problem dogs and trying to match them to very specific people. And we don't get people that come for our door every day that are able to take mm. on a big reactive German Shepherd or a dog that has bitten before or showed aggression and got stranger issues. Mm. So um, It was, yeah, it was probably, with respect to that hard doing the process as we were doing it because the sort of people we were getting weren't really to be able to cover those sorts of dogs the program would have been very different mm. because it wouldn't have been a straightforward right oh yes you know go through the form yet yeah, send you down to the meeting pen and meet this yeah. dog there would have been it would have been a lot it's a much more complicated process, process. Yes, so yeah. i think the fact that we covered wally and that did take up a lot of that episode, didn't it? So we wouldn't, yeah, we would have struggled to put many more high-end sort of needs dogs in there, I think, um, and still achieve sort of the interesting and, you know, lovable side that we Absolutely. wanted to. There's actually a lot um, of those dogs. We have a lot of nervous dogs We here. do, we yeah. Do. Would and they would hate, hate yeah. <laughs> They yeah. would have. Would, you know, we wouldn't necessarily do the meat in the way that we did no, in the no, pen no, either. We would do a very gradual meat. Maybe come up for staff. two walks and you don't yeah, even touch you the dog. Yeah. You just pass food. And that doesn't make great TV, does it? No, so it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, Fair there point. was um, <laughs> little Kimmy the collie and yeah. she was a very nervous dog. But even trying to get her down to the meeting pen. I mean, we were sitting in there for ages thinking, where's this dog? These people have been waiting for, you know, and like we, half they an hour. And improvising, right? Yeah. So she would mm-hmm. go she the was pen on her own. Yeah, so she, was, she dived into a bush. <laughs> <laughs> she was literally in a bush. And we were like, where bush. is the dog? And then we hear <laughs> on the radio, Absolutely. Kimmy's currently uh, hiding in a bush. <laughs> we can't get her out of the we bush. We need her kennel friend. So then we have to, we have to bring out Joey and mm. Princess and have a little, like, trip all of them down Aww. there. And can you imagine the number of dogs that would have really struggled that we just and she was a very sweet, impossible um, she was. appeasing yeah, nervous dogs very, and some of the nervous dogs we get you know yeah are alarm barking yeah they'll alarm barking, bark a lot more and growling and yeah mm. absolutely Abs- and then the whole filming yeah. thing would have just terrified them and it would <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and you yeah, have a really camera into that situation <laughs> yeah. and it just it's recipe for disaster different. yeah and there were some dogs that we did try to film that had really good stories but you could just tell the amount of work they would have needed to get used to just the camera it wouldn't have been fair on them so there no. are some stories we really wanted to show but for the welfare of the dogs, it wasn't right to put them through that. Absolutely. Couldn't, couldn't justify it. Absolutely. Did much happen behind the scenes that that wasn't shown in terms of, was there anything like really funny or anything unexpected that came up? Any embarrassing <laughs> stories? I mean, Chris, you must have an embarrassing <laughs> story. Well, just because you're... <laughs> just why? Just why? <laughs> why you single me you out, know, No, you she's singling have. you out because she doesn't want me to share all <laughs> well, the embarrassing our, stories. Our conversation <laughs> leading up to starting this podcast was, Chris, <laughs> I remember working with you like six <laughs> years ago when you were basically a boy with no beard. Yeah. Um, and quiet little boy in the corner. Yeah. So quiet, um, quite clumsy, <laughs> like a bit awkward. I remember, I remember you um, telling me off when I first started because I worked with you for a bit and you were away for a week and then I came back and I'd worked really hard to get all the dogs <laughs> that out. Sound like me. I worked really hard Not to get all. all the dogs out, but what I'd let slip was some of the, the cleanliness in the kennel. Oh, so I didn't some of the cleanliness. And and you kind of yeah gave me a really good telling off. And I remember being like, oh no, I'm really sorry, oh and be like, I worked oh, so Helen. hard to get the dogs out, but you now I'm where driver. I am now. Where 
I, now so where I am, where I am now, if someone had done that to me, I'd be annoyed because I didn't. There wasn't any towels, there wasn't any blankets, there's no soap. <laughs> Bless him. I hadn't cleaned it's the spent. floor, I hadn't mopped, hadn't swept because I was just trying so to get the dogs you out. Trying but hard was. I tried oh, hard. So like, the, you tried hard with the dogs. That's yeah, the main I tried bit, hard in the wrong areas. The rest um, <laughs> <laughs> should have just left the dogs. But yeah, yeah not yeah. walked them. Just made sure there was clean towels yeah. and mopped the floor. But I, I no, I do remember. Like, and now you're a manager. But I learned from that, and you know, you told me I've been very nice. I learned from that. I learned from that. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I now He's appreciate the feedback. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe who I am today. I so did say you came. You uh, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad that I've helped shape the <laughs> star that you are today. Um, but I, I said to you, you know, you came across very well on camera because, yeah, I do remember you being a bit awkward and shy when you first started. And I haven't worked with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I said that you you came you were very articulate. And then what did you say to me? What does articulate what? mean? <laughs> so I'm talking about things like that, Chris. <laughs> um, I'm still there's still the boy in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we need to explain what articulate means? No, I think Chris? We, should do, we should just leave it. We just leave it. Yeah. yeah. We'll just leave it. Just can, leave Rosie, it. can you fact check what articulate <laughs> means? Can you read it from the dictionary, Go on, please? Get the uh, Google up, please. Oh, Chris. <laughs> get the um, thesaurus out for Chris. <laughs> what's a thesaurus? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Thesaurus yeah. Is okay, that, cool. Is that book with pictures in it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That one yeah. <laughs> Colour it in. <laughs> really. Anything like that. Like, you know, things that people want to hear about. Embarrassing embarrassing things that happen. Funny things that happened. I, I hate know. it when people ask this. I don't know I why I'm asking it. Can you think of any funny stories I can to think make of people laugh? I can think of lots of funny stories that were really funny at the time, but maybe if I tell them now, people <laughs> Not are like, hindsight. that's really, really boring. No. I, think I mean, I can think of a story that you probably don't want me to tell. Yeah. Um, yeah, most funny moments involve Helen, actually. There was... Um, the funniest moment was probably when we were having a really serious conversation about dogs and, you know, as you do. And then Lenny suddenly went, oh, I know who you remind me of. Helen's oh. like, oh, who, who? who? And she goes... You know, uh, Kunis? yeah, no, somebody like that, no, no. you know, uh, yeah. you know, that guy in Aerosmith, um, Steve Tyler, and Helen's <laughs> like, Oh, yeah, his, his daughter, Liv. She was like, No, no, you remind me of Steve Tyler. <laughs> oh, no. So, I'm now known as Steve, <laughs> so I got Everybody googled wow. it, and the spitting image of Steve Tyler. I just have big lips and a big forehead, okay? yeah, the and the cheekbones, it's the cheekbones, the <laughs> nose, possibly hair. the nose, the hair. I mean everything. It was everything <laughs> about her. Can you sing? At no <laughs> point. He's about sixty something. Yeah. Isn't he? Apart from the age, age was the mm. only difference. Maybe really. I had a rough night. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't see it. But we we literally couldn't work <laughs> after that because I think I was <laughs> actually crying. <laughs> so much. <laughs> we're like filming in five minutes, guys, <laughs> and we're just like, God. We yeah. Can't there film. were a lot of like funny moments happening in the office yeah. that we then had to be really serious. Yeah. Because all, all of a sudden it was right. Oh, we're, now, are here. we're now rehoming a dog. You need to be really serious. You get your clipboard. Forget out that you, you have microphones on yes. sometimes, all and you're time. like oh, maybe yes. saying something you shouldn't. You're like, oh, yeah. someone's there. Yeah. You go yeah. to the loo. And you <laughs> yeah. I mean, not necessarily saying things we shouldn't. In we, you know, we didn't say horrible things about people. I think we just, no, just inappro inappropriate mm. stuff. Mm. Yeah. Just normal work talk. Yeah. Just normal. You know, day to day. We had a lot of time to fill. We did. <laughs> there was a lot of t you know a lot of time it where looks we, like were we were doing a lot of work we, yeah. um, in the background we, we worked really hard we worked really hard we do work yeah. really hard we do um, but some of those days were quite long yeah. and um, we had to get our shopping list down somehow <laughs> yeah. for Tesco's later on um, yeah. Chris what about you outside anyone sort of tripping over letting dogs loose oh there was that beagle that kept escaping oh, out yeah. of uh, the meeting yes. pen wasn't there oh, yes. they didn't yeah. feature they that they, 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 no, they didn't feature that no but I would have yeah loved to have been but that's, that's beagle for you, isn't it? You own, you own yeah. a, a naughty beagle, don't you? I do. So, um, <laughs> yes. She's not pure beagle uh, in looks, but she is pure beagle in her brain. <laughs> yeah. And she's a beagle at Jack yeah, Russell. Yeah, beagle Jack she? Russell. So yeah, so her litter were born just too late to feature in the doghouse, oh, which is very annoying. It. But I did get her to star on the New Wood Green poster. So you will see her up in uh, rail railway stations around the country. Watch the space. <laughs> yeah. She but might yeah, make a she feature on the podcast. Yeah, you she, never know. yeah she might do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, we should do <laughs> a beagle podcast. Podcast. Why not to have a beagle? I will bring her in. Because of this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she's just discovered the kitchen bin this week. Oh, uh, nice. nice. I've seen many a photo of her in the dishwasher as well. Yeah, she likes to climb the dishwasher. Yeah, dishwasher in cupboards. She climbs in cupboards. I mean, uh, you've got two young children. Yes. You care for your husband. Yes. You work. Oh. Yes. You, on the side, I make... <laughs> Amazing cakes. birthday cakes for, for people's me. children, yes. Um, and then you decided it'd be a really good idea. I mean, if you came onto the show 
and you yeah. said all this, we would be... You would laugh me out the door. Yeah, yeah I'd I say know. in a very polite way. You show, no. You? no, you would feature story, me in the show because be I've good. got an amazing story. Yeah. However, <laughs> <laughs> you probably wouldn't give me an no. eight-week-old beagle <laughs> cross Jack no. Russell puppy. But there you but go. Yeah, you can't judge a book by its Exactly. <laughs> she, I, you know, she makes me happy, so... She's my... Why not? <laughs> yeah, she drives me insane. She makes me happy. Everyone else hates her, but I love her. Oh, that's like season. But yeah. So... Going back to the show, how did you feel watching the first episode? Because I I was asked when I did an interview, like yeah, how did you feel watching the first episode? And we watched the first episode. I don't think you were there, Chris. All of us together. Oh, we did, yeah. Um, they aired it in the arena, which is like a really oh, no, big I was space. There. I was there. there. I was there, yeah. hiding in the background? No, I was on a different table to... <laughs> oh. Didn't mingle else. with us commoners. <laughs> no. Yeah. Not us three homers. No, not after you told me off. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. give her some distance. I don't know if she's forgiven me yet. <laughs> Four years have gone past. But. I, I'm, a, I'm very forgiving. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't even remember it. Um, and then we watched it, and it was because mm. we were all together, it kind of mm. made it a bit better. But when you kind of went home and watched the second episode on your own, or who were you with when you watched the second episode? All my family, I think. Oh, it's you had to have a party. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. It was a bit... Didn't you have to watch event. every episode with your uh, family? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Every Thursday I know night. Mom, night. Mom, dad, Channel brother, four. sister, partner, dogs there and everything. Yeah. And I'd be, my phone would be getting a <laughs> message from like my cousins and their kids saying, oh my God, I've just seen like, Uncle Chris on TV and they're really excited by it. And then oh. and then if I weren't in an episode, they'd be like, oh, that was a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> my family was exactly the same. But why weren't you on that Ex- one? Yeah. I was like, I'm on it enough. Yeah, I get, there yeah. are more people that work here than just me. For me, it was a great experience. Mm. because um, the whole being on TV part um, is less terrifying now but I still struggle to watch myself yeah. and not criticise myself yeah. mm. but I think um, like just being part of it was so much fun yeah it really was it was like the whole thing like yeah. six weeks of filming or eight weeks of filming yeah, yeah it was six weeks the rehoming side was six weeks yeah. wasn't it so it's six weeks in here doing the rehoming chats but I know they were with you then outside a lot longer weren't they yeah a month before that and even a month after that oh and wow. some things as well. so yeah they were with us five days a week like no sorry seven days a week all day capturing different bits of story because what might happen is a stray might come in all of a sudden like that you need someone <laughs> who's there to capture that moment and i think um harmony story is a good example of that Absolutely. when she came in if we didn't have them there on site all the time we would have missed that that yeah. crucial so she was step. a lurcher that was that came in and she was sh- completely yeah. shaved, shaved yeah. whiskers and Sore all yeah, underway and and you she could see a really her in nasty the wound didn't she yeah really frightened in the back of the van and again seeing her journey from start to finish i think is what people want to see so that's yeah. one of it the was most heartwarming oh stories out of the whole. Really nice um, story. Such a lovely dog. The whole thing. And her, I met her owner. Oh, um, yeah, when you on did Sunday the brunch, Sunday brunch. And she is just so grateful Aww. to everybody for finding her mm. the yeah. perfect dog. And dogs like that are quite hard to rehome, aren't they? You yeah. know, lurchers that come in as strays, mm. they're unknowns, they have no history. Mm. Um, she had quite a lot of medical with her tail. We had to amputate it, uh, yep, or partially amputate it in the end. Yep, she had she really bad MRSA infection, didn't at she? one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah on her tail. Yeah, oh, we, we haven't really had that. I don't no. think in the whole time I've been here we've no. had a dog with MRSA. No. So that's just it was crazy. A, that was a new one. What do you want to say to all the people that like supported the show? Because we got so much love mm, through social it. media. Yeah, wow. just uh, we're really pleased that everyone enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, keep you know if you really liked it, support us. Um, there's loads of ways you can support us volunteering, donating um, come and visit us, come and see what we do we're always here, we're always welcoming there's um, tons of events yeah, there's we lots ha- of ways that we can help people exactly, well yeah and even as, as we said before, if you don't know whether you want to rehome an animal, that's fine we're here to have a chat about it, we don't mind just sitting, having a chat, um, make an appointment and come and see us we're not judgmental, nope. Nope. we're here to help we're quite nice. <laughs> we are Ish. quite nice. Um, no, I mean, I know we're celebrities, but we are quite down to <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining me today on this no. podcast. Really appreciate it. It's been so nice to catch up because we haven't really had a chance no, to catch we up haven't. since um, the TV show ended with our crazy lives and work mm. and everything mm-hmm. else. So it's been nice to reminisce. It has. Yes, it has. It has. And I'm sure there's lots more that happened that we've we should forgotten about. Often, yeah. <laughs> we should do it again. If people enjoy it. Yes. Maybe we'll have you back. But thank you so Brilliant. much. Lovely. Thank you. Good fun. Good. Thanks. Bye. Bye.